What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Marketing Lot, a show dedicated to teaching real and powerful marketing tactics directly from the business leaders using them right now to change lives and become more successful. My name is Brian Hatch, marketing automation expert and founder of Automate Big, sponsor of The Marketing Lot. Today's episode is gonna be awesome because of the guest we have today. He's a guy who's created a life that many people dream about, and I can't underestimate that or, or understate that. Uh, and so I can't wait to have everybody learn a little more from uh, our, our wonderful guest. Mike Wolf is a real estate investor, mentor, international speaker, and philanthropist. Mike has his, and his teams have done thousands of real estate deals all over the US and Canada. And he also helps other people to invest safely and create passive income and wealth. Mike Wolf, welcome to the marketing lot. Hey, good to see you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love having you here. Is, is there anything else that the audience needs to know about you before we dive into our topic today? Oh boy, well, I think I think you covered a lot of ground there. So, um, but I, I think I think the one thing I would like to share is, especially for people that feel like they're stuck in their marketing, uh, I am not a guru at all when it comes to marketing, but I've tried a lot of different stuff, and so uh, don't fret. There, there's hope for you because if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's good to see good entrepreneurs and business owners like yourself doing great things in the world. And whether you, like you just said, whether you are the marketer in your business or not, it's a matter of marketing still works, still, still has a, has a place in every business. So thank you for, uh, for jumping in here with us. Definitely excited to have you. Um, today's episode I'm really excited about is the topic. It's, it's of prime importance and, and, and I don't know, a glorious topic is how I would describe it. And uh, we're going to be talking about YouTube. So, Mike, tell us more about your take on YouTube. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, um, you know, I've done, besides real estate, that's what I'm most known for, but I've done a lot of businesses. And one of the things I love about YouTube is we, we all walk around with devices, uh, our, our iPhones and our Samsungs and our Androids and whatever. And we have these with us 100% of the time, pretty much everybody. And YouTube is free and we have the equipment with us wherever we go. And as you know, I like to travel. I travel pretty much full time. And you know, when something pops into my head, I'll shoot a video wherever I'm at and I'll upload it to YouTube. And the cost of that is absolutely zero. And so I get a lot of um, you know, people that come up to me and they go, hey, you know what? I'm thinking of hiring a marketing team and you know, I want to do, you know, they're going to charge me X amount of dollars to do A, B, C, D, and E. And I go, well, have you tried some of the, the free stuff first? Uh, cause that's one of the biggest things when you're starting a new, especially if you're starting a new entrepreneurial venture, if you don't have cash flow and you're tying up your, your resources, your funds, uh, you know, I think it's most important to get started with the free stuff and YouTube, we are so fortunate. I mean, if you think back, not that many years ago, just the cost of creating a video was prohibitive. And then even if you created it to get it out there it was prohibitive. And now the, the beauty of YouTube is it's owned by Google. And so if you have a video on YouTube and somebody does a Google search on your topic, so for example, for me, if somebody's looking up turnkey rental properties, for example, and I've got videos on YouTube, I'm going to rank higher than somebody else who's marketing elsewhere. And so, so that's the beauty of it. It's free. We already have the technology. And one of the things I really want to drive home to your audience is that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I want it to be perfect. And so I think they need this fancy camera and fancy microphones and uh, they've got to look like they're uh, you know on CNN and people actually don't want that I, I find that people like they connect with you if you're authentic and you're yourself and because I'm always traveling and, I, and I'm usually in hot places a lot of times I'm like sweating and I'm at the beach and I'm in my shorts and a t-shirt and I just put whatever out there and people are, are uh, they're, they want to see the, the content. They don't care about how, what you look like. They don't care about your, your hair, which is good because you can't get a haircut right now. And uh, so, so my advice to people is get out there and start creating these videos and it's the best free marketing you'll ever get. I love it. And, and there's a lot of people that definitely stall out because they don't think they're going to look good on video. They don't think they've got um, a while back. I did, did a video for my, my audience about, do you have a ring light? Like, we get lost on these things that are distractions. They don't matter. Like if you have a special this or special lighting or, uh, I mean, your phone does it all now. I mean, it, any phone in the past couple of years, few years that's been brought out is, is wonderful for producing that content. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's amazing the quality of what you can shoot with your, your, you know, your smartphone these days. 
And, but a lot of people use that as an excuse because they're afraid to get in front of the camera. And so was I. Um, and I kind of had to force myself uh, at the beginning. And then as I started to get people commenting, putting good comments and liking my stuff. And then when I started to get people calling me, say, hey, I saw you on YouTube. How do I work with you? It's like, then I had very little uh, resistance to making videos. And now, you know, now I love it. But a lot of times when I tell people, you know, you, you know, that's what I recommend is go start shooting your, your, uh, your first video. A lot of people are very resistant because they don't like how they look. And I hate how I look uh, on camera, by the way. I never actually watch my videos. I make them. I send them to my team. My team uploads it, puts in all the, the tags. And if I had to watch myself, I'd probably be very, very critical. So my advice is if you don't like how you look, don't watch it. Just, uh, you, you can upload it without actually watching the video and uh, just get started because it makes such a huge difference. Yeah. So you, one thing that you said was that, uh, you know, you could, you could pick your phone up and just shoot whatever. And, and that, that's one thing I want to dive a little bit into you on um, your videos. I've, I've seen many of them, not all of them, but I've seen many of them. There's definitely a theme, a pattern. So, so what, describe, I know you didn't mean whatever, but tell, tell us a little more about what kind of stuff you create for a YouTube video. Yeah, for, for me, I'm kind of, uh, you know, sometimes I get inspired. I'll see something during my travels. I say, hey, you know, I, I really need to share this uh, because, it, you know, how it pertains, how it relates back to my business or my, life, my lifestyle is built on passive income. And, and I'm a passive income expert which means I teach people how, how you do something one time, get paid for it over and over and over again. And so during my travels, I like to demonstrate how, okay, I'm not just talking about this hypothetically, I'm actually living the, the things that I teach. I'm actually practicing what I preach. So a lot of times things will come to me during my travels and then I'll just say, oh, you know, well, it's fresh on my mind, I'm gonna film it right now. Uh, but if I were uh, the viewers, maybe I'm, I'm guessing most people are not traveling full time and maybe they wanna be a little bit more uh, you know, targeted with what they're producing. So what I'd recommend for somebody who's just getting started is think of the top 10 questions that you get asked a lot. Uh, you know, it, whatever your industry is, I'm sure you're getting asked the same things over and over and over again and shoot those videos, make them, make them pretty short. Uh, I find that, you know, two minute, three minute videos work really well and answer those things for two reasons. One is if people are asking that they're going on Google and they're searching for it, number one. And number two, uh, one of the great things is if somebody asks that same question instead of having to, you know, if they, let's say they send you an email asking this question, instead of typing out the same thing over and over and over again, to send them a link to the video. And now not only are you giving them the information, but people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And when you shoot a video and you're your authentic self and you're speaking from the heart, uh, people, people connect with that. And so if they have a choice of doing business with somebody who they feel like they already know, even though they may have never met you, uh, or somebody who's a you know total stranger, uh, and a lot of times things can get misconstrued in in text. It's a lot easier when we communicate verbally and visually. Uh, you're going to get a lot more business. And and, and once again, because uh, you know YouTube is owned by Google, that is such a big plus. If you're if you're putting things out there that people are thinking in their head that they want to search and find out about, they're going to find you, and it's a big 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 plus. Yeah, I love that. And what I, and being a, an automation guy, I love that because you've just now made it easy for everybody listening to shoot 10 videos. I mean, like whatever you answer most, or even if you don't know every, you haven't been in business a million years or whatever, then find the top 10 things that people are asking about your industry and shoot a video on how to solve it, how to learn it, how to, you know, if you need to do, there's so many cool softwares out there. You can shoot a screencast. You can, like even what we're doing right now, you can shoot a video and teach people a lesson. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to be able to share that with people. Um, and it's funny you say that. That's, that's how um, I got introduced to one of my biggest clients ever that we mutually know is right. that I was shooting videos to teach him how to do something and giving it to them that way instead of it be just being like, a, okay, well, let's, let me get, type it out in an email. Or that's, that's a phenomenal way to create some content. I love that. Exactly. And a lot of people, when they, you know, if they send me a text or an email and they ask me a question, I'll just send them a link. Or sometimes I'll shoot a fresh video specifically for them. Or if somebody asks me a question that I haven't filmed the video on, I'll film a video, put it on YouTube, then send them a link. And that's a really good way to get a customer because if they see that you're actually taking the time to not only answer their question, but actually shoot a video on that on their topic, 
you know, they, they just love you for that. So, uh, it's, it's been a very effective tool for me. And, uh, I'm so glad I got over the fear because it would have been easy to say, Oh, well, I'm just not going to do it. And a lot of people don't, I tell them they should do it and they still don't do it. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're leaving a lot of money on the table. So let's talk about that a little bit. Where, where was the tipping point for you? Because there's a lot of people that, that will produce content and it's not initially picked up by a lot of people. It's, I mean, you know, a couple likes or a couple video views or whatever. So how, what was the tipping point where, I know you said once you got a call from someone saying, hey, I want to work with you, that was tipping point mentally. But I'm saying, where did your video start picking up a little bit of traction to where you're like, this is worth it as opposed to, wow, I'm shooting a lot of videos and putting them out there and no one's really doesn't care. Yeah, well, it took a little while because when I first started, it was just kind of a random thing. Okay, I, I got over the fear and it's like, okay, I'm putting them out there and you don't get a whole, you know, at first it was crickets. No, nobody was finding it. It was pretty quiet, but I still, I still continued to make the videos. Now, if I was starting fresh, I'd be creating those top 10 questions I get asked. Then after that, I would probably create what, what I call should ask questions. So these are things that people don't know to ask me because they don't, you know, they don't know what they don't know. and so those will be my next 10 videos. So those are your, those are your first 20. And I guarantee you, by the time you have those 20 up there, you will start to get traction. Now, some of the other things I didn't know is, you know, at the end of every video now, I always have a call to action. So uh, if you have some sort of online course or some way that people can work with you or something you can give away, an ebook, uh, I'd always put that at the end so that not only are they, are they seeing you on YouTube, but now potentially you're building a list of all these people that have an interest in your topic. I didn't know this when I first started. Uh, the other things I would, at the very least, a call to action, if you don't have anything to offer yet, should be, hey, you know, at the end, say, hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, share it with your friends and like it. So at least if these people subscribe, they're gonna keep getting your videos until you have something to offer them. And so, um, so those are things I did not know that if I had you know, known then what I know now, I could have got quicker traction, quicker paychecks, uh, all that. But you know what? I stuck with it anyway because once I got over the fear, I actually started to enjoy not having to repeat myself and instead be able to send links to people. And uh, you know, uh, it wasn't too long before I started to get people noticing and saying, "Hey, you know what? I saw you on YouTube." And I think it's kind of weird because uh, you know, in my generation, get, getting on TV, there was a very high barrier to entry. You couldn't just get on a TV show. But on YouTube, everybody's got anybody can have a YouTube channel, and yet so few people actually take advantage of that. And so um, to me, I, I was actually surprised. I was on, I, I forget where I was. I think I was in Cayman Islands and I was on a beach and some kid saw me filming these videos and he heard, he heard me mention, you know, YouTube in the video. He goes, are you a YouTuber? And so the young, the, the generation now they're growing up with YouTube and it's like a really cool thing and they love YouTubers. So it's your chance. So you get the fame without having to get yourself on television, which is expensive and uh, very, very difficult to do unless you happen to be well connected. I love it. I love that. And, and one of the things that I always look at is the research behind it. I'm, I'm, I'm a technical guy. I love that kind of stuff. And YouTube, late 2018, early 2019, overtook Facebook in number of uh, views per month. So YouTube right now, there's no website out there in the world that gets more views on a daily and monthly basis than them, even though Facebook is right below them, right behind them, right. they're just, they're phenomenal. And, and, then, and the other thing that's important to note is like that you've actually said, that it's just interesting to hear you back up the evidence and the research that's been done, is that people prefer to listen to people who know the topic, they're less inclined to worry about it being a celebrity. And that's a beautiful, right. that beautiful thing on, on YouTube is that you don't have to be like the world's most celebrity uh, on a certain thing if you know your topic and you know what you're talking about, people are going to listen and search. Like you said, they're going to, how to do this, then you're going to come up and they're going to listen to you not knowing who you are 10 seconds ago. And actually it, it actually will turn you into a celebrity potentially because uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, especially, especially in my, in my space, when I'm at an event, people recognize me. If I'm at a, a real estate related event, people will recognize me there. From my from my videos, and so to me it's kind of weird because I'm just a regular guy. But people come up and they want their picture taken with you, and it's just so uh, it's so bizarre. But also on the point you mentioned, uh, Facebook and Facebook Lives are great. But with Facebook Lives, you're pretty much uh, sending out your message to your uh, people that are already your audience. And uh, when you put it on YouTube, the goal is to find people that aren't 
you know, there are some of them will already be your audience, which is great because they're subscribed. But it's also to bring in new people that are, are not yet your audience and don't know that you exist yet. And so, uh, you know, YouTube is such it's been such a great tool for for doing that. And especially, like I said, you know, now at the end of my videos, I always say, hey, if, you know, if you found this uh, interesting, you know, click the link below and you'll get my free passive income masterclass. And so now these people are, uh, you know, being sent to my, to my site. They're giving me their name and email address. They're getting something free from me. And now I can market to them. Even if they don't tune into my YouTube channel, now I'm in their inbox on top of that. And so, it's, you know, once you kind of, uh, you know, start to create some stuff uh, and, and you know that you can send them from YouTube to whatever you're creating, that's where the magic happens and that's where the money starts coming in. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode of The Marketing Lot and you will use the tactics that you just learned to become more successful in your business. Now, just for staying to the end, for being one of our loyal followers here in The Marketing Lot, I want to give you something special. Now, we do workshop series where we actually spend two hours, I spend two hours with business owners, teaching them, training them on whatever phase of their business and their marketing campaigns need the most help. This is sales and checkouts, this is email automation, this is landing pages, this is opt-in pages, this is lead magnets, this is all kinds of fun stuff, and I wanna help you get it right. And if you wanna jump into that workshop, I'll do it for 90% off. Like, we don't offer this anywhere else, and so if you use the promo code on this page, you'll actually get 90% off of whatever phase of the Marketing Build It series that you'd like to be able to tackle right now in your business for 90% off. Use a promo code, jump in there, and I will see you inside of the Build It Workshop series today. What we've gleaned from what we've talked about just thus far, just a few minutes into our conversation here, is that it's a phenomenal platform. It gives people the opportunity to share a message, to not have to repeat themselves 80 times. That's probably one of the most annoying things in business, is you're saying the oh same goodness, thing all the time. Yeah. So shoot the video one yeah. time, get it out to people, and you'll get traction. Um, are there any other big tips that you have about creating YouTube content and, 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 you know, keeping up with that kind of, of uh, message. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the main thing is that you don't want to make your videos too long unless it's a topic. And I know there's some exceptions, but and, until you kind of get known and people will tune in and listen to every word you say, uh, YouTube will actually reward you if people stay from the beginning to the end of your videos. So, uh, so you definitely want to make it to the point. You want to keep people interested. You want to keep, uh, you don't want them tuning in for five seconds and tuning out because you, you'll actually get penalized for that. So that's one thing. The other thing I'd recommend is if you ever get stuck on what to create a video on and you've done all the frequently asked questions and the should ask questions, then I look at some of your competitors, see what they're shooting for videos and don't, don't steal their content, but take their topic and give your opinion on it and, and give your two cents worth. And uh, you know, that's what people are paying for is your perspective. And so, uh, so don't be afraid to go and find out what other people are doing and, and what's ranking high, what people are searching for. And uh, there's other ways to do it. My team, I don't, I couldn't tell you exactly how to do it, but there's ways to see what um, uh, search terms people are searching for on YouTube and on Google and create videos around those topics within your, within your field uh, that people are searching for uh, so that you get more views on your videos. I love it. And that is absolutely true. There's, there's keywords you can hone in on. There are tags you can you can put on and make sure that you're uh, you're specializing in areas. So that's really good, Mike. That's awesome. Um, I I, uh, I found that there's massive value in YouTube, and the more the more consistent you are, the better your reward. And it's it's good for you to say that you know it's better that someone watches your whole video than watches you know 30 seconds of a 20 minute video. It's better they watch the whole thing. Uh, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know how the other algorithms work. And, and not that you have to be uh, an ultra technical person to use YouTube as, as, as you've stated, you know, get on your phone, get a video shot and put it out there. But those simple things of keeping it short and sweet, focus on one topic at a time if you can, um, so that it, it just keeps people engaged and get them to the end of the video. That, that's phenomenal advice. I think, I think, We've, we've given and dropped a, a ton of knowledge on this platform um, to anybody that's like w debating it or worried if they're going to be able to be okay on it. Um, it's just, uh, I think my, my call here is to the audience is stop hesitating. Don't stress. Don't worry about what you think or feel or look like. You're going to shoot some crappy videos. Would, would, would you say that's true? Well, when I look back on some of my earliest videos, like to me, they're kind of embarrassing. And I know that if I, if I redid them, I do them a whole lot better. However, 
you know, every week I get an email from somebody saying, thank you so much. I, I really need to see that. You know, they'll, they'll refer to one of my old videos and they'll say, I really need to see that today. It was really helpful to me. And it's like, uh, you know, so I'm never going to, I'm never going to take them down. I might, I might create updated versions of different things, but you know what? I'm, I'm uh, very happy that I took action and I got started and it would have been easy for me. So I hate that. I'm never doing these again, but you know, every, everything's an evolution. You got to start somewhere. And as you get, as you do it more and more, you're going to get better at it. And, and uh, just, you know, my advice to anybody is, is, and I was actually talking to a friend of mine who's an accountant and she's Chinese and she says, Oh, I can't do it because of my accent. I've been, I've been bugging her to, to, to shoot her first video and she actually shot some videos, but now she hasn't released them. So shoot them, release them. And you know, people like uh, authenticity and they don't want it to be, it doesn't have to be all fancy and special effects and, don't worry about all that. Just have great content. Show people that you know your stuff, uh, so people want to work with you, and uh, everything will everything will shift. You'll see. Love it. I think that was one of the things I wanted to actually ask you about is overproduced con uh, content, right? Have you ever shot a video with like the whole white screen, green screen, and done that kind of thing uh, in in your experience, Mike? Um, I, I, way back, like I've done some online courses with that, but not, not my YouTube videos. I, like I said, I'm almost always traveling. Um, they're, they're fine. Uh, I mean, if you've got the equipment, but yeah. I find more people than not use different things that they don't have as an excuse to not get started. It's like, Oh, once I get a better camera, or once I get a better microphone, once I've got the green screen, I say, just go make simple videos that help people and answer their questions and, and solve a problem for them. And then give them, uh, you know, as you get more advanced, create something that uh, where you can take them from YouTube and bring them uh, closer to you, to your website, onto your list, and then just keep giving them value, value, value. So that, you know, that for me, I give away so much stuff for free. By the time I actually have something for sale, people are, uh, you know, I, I get this all the time. I hear, man, like your free stuff is so good. How good is, I mean, what's your, what's your paid stuff going to be like? And so when people love the stuff that you're giving away for, I've had people tell me the stuff I give away for free is better than the stuff that they've paid for with other people. So when you uh, keep, just keep adding tremendous value, uh, the paychecks are going to come in because people will uh, just be wanting to, to, to work with you closer and uh, hang out with you. And so when I do live events, you know, once again, you kind of become that celebrity because people recognize you from, from your, your videos and it just kind of creates a magic for these people to be in the same room as you. And so they can't wait to work with you. So just get started though. It all starts with making that first video. The second one's a lot easier than the first and they just keep getting easier after that. I love it. I, I, I think consistency is, is the key. Um, I, we have a client that when they've done over like produced it more, right. Done, done the backdrop and done the better lighting, all kinds of stuff. Actually the engagement went down because people got used to what they do organically and it just feels more authentic. Like you said, so it's not, I mean, not that a product, a production is a bad thing, but note that that's not necessary in most cases. So. Yeah. And, and I'd say the other thing is just be yourself. Like for me, if, if you see me on, on if you see me on stage, if you see me in the streets, if you see me at a restaurant, I'm always dressed the same. I don't put on some suit. I'm not, I don't shoot my videos in front of a Lamborghini trying to show off or in front of a big house. Um, just be yourself and, and let people resonate with who you really are and connect with you. And you're going to attract the right tribe. The right people are going to find you. They always do. Um, but as soon as you start to be so, try to be something or not, I think it actually has a negative effect. And I think same with overproducing uh, your videos because people are saying, okay, this is a little bit, especially in my space because you know, in, in real estate investment space, there's a lot of scams and there's a lot of uh, not very heart centered people. I would say that are just, there's some people are really good marketers and they don't really have the content. And I think that actually turns uh, some people off. Like I know for myself, when I see somebody who's got really, it's just too slick and they're, it's just overdone. It actually, I, I click out, I turn it off. So uh, so my advice is just be your authentic self and you'll find the right people will find you. Yeah. And, and people want to buy and work with people that, that they feel comfortable with, right? They want to, they want to feel so. So if you're not yourself is what I'm trying to say, then you're going to attract people that you don't really want to hang out with, that you really exactly. don't want to work with. And so be authentic and, and you'll attract the right kind of people that want to work with you. Yeah. So true. Love it. 
Well, Mike, is there anything else? We, we've had a great opportunity to, to discuss, I, I think, massive value points here for the audience. I hope that people have been taking notes and checking things out here. But is there anything else you'd like to share um, from any other topics or, or this? Anything else we need to dive in deeper today? Yeah, well, I, had, I want to add one more thing that once again, it's not free, but it's almost free. And that's meetup.com. And so for me, I've done, uh, I have the, the biggest real estate investing meetup in Calgary and right now we're in COVID time so we can't really meet up however um, you know during normal times uh, I find that's another great resource where uh, for those of you who don't know if you go to meetup.com you can you can host meetings on whatever topic you know that you're passionate about that you're an expert at and so for me I, I basically will put on events for uh, people that either are investors that want to get to the next level or people who want to learn how to invest in real estate, and I make my meetings free. But when you when you put a, a, a meetup on, and by the way, I think you get three meetup groups. I think it's seventy two dollars a year, so it's almost free. Yeah. And when, when you put, if I, if I were to put, you know, Calgary Real Estate Meetup Group, anybody who's got an interest in real estate is going to get an email saying, "Hey, you know, you, you have an interest in real estate. Mike Wolf just started a new group. You might want to join. It's free to join." And so you get all these people raising their hands saying, hey, I'm interested in that. And once again, you're getting all these uh, people that um, you otherwise wouldn't have met almost for free following you now. And so you put on an event once in a while. When you do the event, uh, have a sign-up sheet where you're getting their, once again, their name and email address. And the goal is to build up a list of people that are interested in what you're offering. And so I recommend setting up your own. I also recommend attending other people's and networking with uh, other like-minded people. And that's, you know, uh, when I look at the f almost the free and almost free stuff and how much money it's made me, it's like, you know, I don't really have to pay. It's very rare that I actually pay for any marketing anymore because I get all the stuff for free, so I'm spoiled. And you can do the same. That's awesome. You know, it seems like more and more people are doing meetup or, you know, f uh, free training or lunch and learns or whatever you want to call it. People come together and, and teach something that's become a lot more common. And that's great to know that, that meetup.com is, is a great way to start that. Some people get stopped. Like it's just, it's just like the video part of the, of the YouTube. It's like, oh, well, I don't, I, how much, how much work's gonna take to get mm -hmm. all the people in the room and pay for their lunch and do like, whatever they wanna do. And they, they, they stop because it's just gonna be a lot. Where these platforms like, you know, we talked about YouTube and then meetup.com where they can make it very easy to, Get a group of people around the topic that, you, that you're an expert in and share what you have. Drop some knowledge on them and, and follow up. It makes it so easy because they kind of do the heavy lifting. They've got your audience already there. And you're just basically saying, hey, I want a piece of that audience. And I'm going to put on my events. And, and they're sending the people to you. And once again, it's almost, it's almost free. It's a lot less than almost any, uh, you know, any marketing that you'd ever pay for. And one of the things that I also recommend is sign up for everybody else's meetups that are uh, you know similar to yours in a similar vein and uh, the reason for that is one you want to attend but two uh, I find a lot of people they start up these meetups and then after a while they just uh, they, they get tired of doing it and then they drop their group and what ends up happening is you're gonna get an email saying hey so-and-so is, dr is dropping their group do you want to take it over and you know I, I've taken over uh, groups that had like hundreds and hundreds of members because somebody else uh, abandoned them. I took it over. Now I've got, you know, hundreds of extra followers I would have never had. And uh, so that's made me a lot of money. The other thing I do uh, that most people don't is I don't just set up meetups in the city where I live. I set them up all over the country. One, I love to travel. And if I go to a, to a city that I don't live in and I decide I want to put on an event, I've already got an audience waiting for me, uh, number one. But even if you don't, you can still send emails to the people that are following you within that meetup and let them know what you're doing. Uh, maybe get them to subscribe to your YouTube channel and follow you there. But it's just a really good way to, to build up a list of people interested in the thing that you offer. And uh, once again, I can't stress enough that this stuff is like, like I don't know how we ever did business before all these things. We're so lucky to have it, and yet so few people take advantage of it. Yeah. One of the things I feel like come, uh, well, one of the reasons behind that, I think it, most people get overwhelmed with what like opportunity there, there are over 5,000 program softwares that you can use for your business. And there, there are multiple thousands of other, other programs like a meetup.com that is used for that. 
and people get lost. They don't know what to focus on. They don't know. I mean, I, I'm betting you that there are plenty of people listening to this that will have never heard of meetup.com and decide to change their tune, right? And they'll be one of the ones that win from this. Absolutely. So there's so many platforms. It's a matter of diving consistently on the ones you use. And that's where I think the, the real magic is. I agree. And uh, I think we live in the absolute best times ever to be an entrepreneur. We've got so much uh, stuff at our fingertips. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of the stuff was cost prohibitive there. Can you imagine back in the old days, you know, the, when we do, when I, when I do a webinar back in the old days, that was impossible. You know, people were creating those, uh, uh, what do you call them? Um, those infomercials and they cost millions and millions of dollars. And you were taking a whole lot of risk and the ones that did well made a lot of money but you had to put up a lot of cash before you could even get in the game. And now we can test stuff for, for virtually nothing. And if it doesn't work, then we just try the next thing. And uh, we just live in really, really good times to be an entrepreneur. And, and uh, I think anybody who's watching this, you know, if you're, if you're not already doing meetup and or uh, YouTube and you're wondering, Hey, you know, why am I struggling to get customers? If you're not doing that, you're leaving a lot of money on the table for sure. I love it. That's, that's, that's where I want to leave today's episode is that go out and use these platforms, use them consistently and follow Mike's advice here, guys. I, I, you will be greatly um, blessed for your efforts. You'll, you'll see the returns. You'll see the results come in of the followers and the people that want to do business with you. And that way, you know, you can make a mark, you can make a difference. And that's what we're here for is to show the tactics, the real life, implementable, easy things to be able to do in your business so that when you go out and want to grow, it's not hard. It's not difficult. So yeah. And one of the things I'd recommend is, you know, even if, you're, if you have no interest in real estate, it doesn't matter. Just Google Mike Wolf Mastery and YouTube and just go see the flow of my videos and see how at the end there's always a call to action and just how, how I uh, start and how there's always, uh, you know, the length of time that the videos go and how, uh, you know, just fo follow that format and, because uh, I've tested a lot of different things as to the, the timing and where to put the call to action and what to offer and just follow that. Use that as kind of your, your model and uh, uh, it'll save you a little bit of time getting, you know, getting uh, starting to get people uh, noticing you. I love it. We'll, uh, we'll make sure that we have that here on this video to go to MikeWolfMastery.com and learn a lot more about how he's doing his videos, where he is. You'll be able to find him on meetup.com as well to see how he's doing that. And just like everything, if you go learn from someone that's using it well and do what they're doing, but in your own way, then you can really stand to gain a lot. So thank you so much, Mike, for being with us here uh, for another episode of The Market Lot. Thanks, Brian. My pleasure. All right. Hey, I'm glad you watched another episode of The Marketing Lot, where we teach tactics that if you implement, can change the trajectory of your business. Now, in addition to that, for staying here to the end, I wanted to give you something very, very special. I run workshop series where I'm actually teaching and training principles of automation, of how to scale a sales page, how to get opt-ins, how to take care of your, your landing pages and your lead magnets, all that kind of fun stuff. And we go through these phases and teach it to you live for two hours. So this isn't a course where you're gonna like figure it out on your own. This is where you get to ask questions live with me online and I actually go through those phases that matter most in your business right now. So if you use the promo code on this page, you get 90% off. Literally, we sell it for 100% of price. You are getting 90% off just for watching this episode of The Marketing Lot. And so if you'll take advantage and use this promo code, you'll actually be able to get in, pick the phase that matters most to you, and I'll see you within seven days at our next workshop to be able to tackle the challenges that you face in your marketing. I look forward to helping you and look forward to seeing you on another episode of The Marketing Lot.